Hey everybody, welcome back to Take a Bath Productions. In this video, I'm going to be doing something a little different than I would normally do. Normally, we're trying to fix something or program something or whatever. But today, I want to talk a little bit about ham radio and give you some compelling reasons why you might want to get yourself involved in 2022 and 2023 or even beyond if you're watching this video after that. As well as give you some reasons why I got involved in ham radio over 13 years ago. I'm hoping to save you some time, trouble, and most importantly, money with some of the tips I may give in this video. If you found value in this video, click that like button below and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any content. All right, so without further ado, let's dive right in. All right, so real brief history as to why I got involved in ham radio. I came from CB, just like many other people did, and I had a CB set up in my house about 13 years ago. Well, I was on the CB one night talking to the local guys around the area and my neighbor happened to be listening and he was a ham and he, of course, he had the ability to transmit on the CB band. So he contacted me and said, hey, you're pretty strong. Are you close by? And I told him where I was at. And it turns out we were two houses apart, literally two houses away. So he came down and uh, showed me his ham radio set up. And well, I was hooked ever since, you know, it was it was just really cool. So one of the things that you can do if you want to get involved in ham radio is get a very inexpensive rig, like an HT, that's called Handy Talkie. That's why they call it an HT. Now this one is an ICOM. It's a little bit more expensive, but you can get these uh, Bofang radios that are much, much cheaper. And I'll be talking about that here coming up real soon. Now one of the things you can do with these radios is you can expand the uh, transmit by taking the rubber duck antenna off of there and get an adapter that you can use with coax and that will plug right into that. You can use this as an external antenna or you can use the external antenna with the HT and that'll greatly expand your transmit. Now you can receive all you want and listen all you want, but you can't transmit on this without a license, okay? Also, you can get an SDR receiver that you can plug into your computer Put a little out outside antenna outside and listen to the HF bands, which are much lower here, and you can listen to those around the world. Uh, but my advice on that is if you get one of those receivers, make sure it will not only cover the HF bands, but it will also cover sideband. It'll say LSB and USB and all that stuff. If they don't do that, it's going to be worthless and you won't be able to listen in on the HF bands, okay? Now, speaking of hooking an external antenna to an HT, a great project that you can do at home is a copper J-pole and you can just build this out of half inch plumbing parts, half inch copper pipe, half inch 90s, all that kind of stuff. And you can receive a lot better than the rubber duck antenna will allow you to do, okay? All right, so if you do decide to get into the more expensive uh, radios like an HF radio, here's my setup right here. This is an ICOM 7600. This is an older radio, but it still works really well. See that? It's, uh, I don't know where that guy is, you know, he could be anywhere. This is the 20 meter band, okay? So I got all this stuff at, usually at a discounted price. I bought this one used. I got this free, actually, from a friend of mine who was nice enough to give it to me. Uh, the power supply, I wound up getting new. The amplifier, I got used for a pretty reasonable price. The bird watt meter was used at a pretty reasonable price, you know, so you can, you don't have to buy everything new. You can shop around and get a lot of discounts on this stuff, okay? We're going to talk about prices here in just a few minutes. Um, also, this is a uh, pretty cheap MFJ power supply. Uh, these are about $150, actually, but this is a 30-amp supply, and it will power just about any of this stuff right here that you see. I happen to have a, a larger power supply because I used to have a 2-meter amplifier that was really power-hungry, and I sold the amplifier, so... It's gone, but I still got the power supply. And this is my mobile uh, 2 meter 440 rig. This is a Yaesu. Uh, this one works very well. It'll actually do crossband repeat where you can use your HT to come in at 440 and it'll retransmit your voice on 2 meters. All right, John. Uh, I've already initiated contact with you. Uh, can you hear me on this crossband? Got a good signal on your radio. It sounds great. And you can use this type of radio with only a tech license, a technician license, which is the first tier. 
All right, most people start out with that. It's very rare that somebody goes and takes the test and they come out an extra on the first day, but it does happen. Okay, so let's talk about some prices for a basic radio setup for a minute. Now, most of what I'm going to tell you is all brand name stuff, so it is a little bit more expensive and there are cheaper options available. But remember the Bofang I mentioned a minute ago, the UV5R? That thing is like $22 on Amazon. I mean, that's a great entry-level price if you just want to pick up one of those and see whether or not you like the hobby or not. That would be uh, cheap! <laughs> that's, that's all I can say. Cheap! Um, here's a uh, ICOM 2200H that I have. I've had this for years, and I've always had good audio reports with this. If you can find a used one like this for around $100, that'd be a great price. The newer model of this is the ICOM 2300, and I think that's $169. Now, if you want a basic HF radio, ICOM makes a real nice one. It's an IC718 from ICOM. I think those are like $649. I had a friend of mine that had one of those and always had good audio reports with it. You'd never know he was on an entry-level radio. Okay, you can get a mobile antenna for under $50. Uh, a basic power supply I showed you earlier is about $150 for a 30 amp one. Now, if you want to build an antenna, here's one that I built. It's a, a fan dipole. Okay, I just made this out of uh, 12 gauge copper wire off of a spool and, and some plumbing parts, and it was easy to build. No problem at all. Just Google fan dipole plans and you can get the, uh, the instructions for that. Now, if you're going to run an antenna for two meters, um, and transmit on it. I don't recommend a very long run, especially if you're using cable like co uh, the coax cable like RG8X or something like that. Those cables tend to get a little bit lossy after too much length. Now one of the cool things that this Yezu radio behind me will do, as well as a lot of other radios, I'm pretty sure the ICOM I showed you earlier, the 2200 and the 2300 will do it, is you can listen to the aviation band. Now, you might not sound like much, but it is kind of interesting to listen to the airplanes coming into the towers, coming into the airports or whatever, you know, just to see what's going on. And if you have a fairly close airport, you can also tune into the AWOS frequency and get the, uh, the local weather conditions. So that's pretty cool. And you also can listen in on the weather reporting, the NOAA, you know, like 162 frequency range. You can listen to that as well. And as well on the HT, in case of a power outage, this will tune to those NOAA weather stations, and you can get this even if the power goes out. So that's really helpful. All right, so I've already talked a little bit about antennas. Here's my current antenna setup. It's kind of a temporary setup. I've got this tower strapped to a tree, and my 2 meter 440 antenna is strapped to the tower that's strapped to the tree. I mean, it works, but it's not ideal. Eventually, I'm probably going to set it up, you know, the right way. I've got my HF antenna up in a tree right here with the middle part up in a tree and the, uh, the ends of the antenna are supported by other trees. And if you don't have any trees, then I, I used poles on my other antenna setup that I had before this. Here's, a, here's my tower. Now this was a nice 60 foot tower. I had my, uh, my two meter beams kind of stacked together as well as a big 20 meter uh, HF Yagi antenna. And also, as you can see here, I've got my uh, fan dipole underneath all that. So speaking of antennas, if you happen to have more than one radio and you just want to hook one antenna to both radios, you can take an antenna switch like this and you can hook multiple radios to this with one output to one antenna. Like if you have a scanner and you have an HT or a two meter mobile rig or whatever, and you want to be able to switch back and forth on those radios, it doesn't matter if the antennas are tuned correctly because obviously your HF antenna is not going to work with your 2 meter radio. But if you're just using the, the antenna for receive only, you can use an antenna switch like this to switch out multiple radios. Now this is an Alpha Delta. This is a pretty good uh, antenna switch. Uh, this one has a uh, lightning suppressor in there and all kinds of uh, fancy stuff. But they do make some MFJ switches that are much cheaper than the Alpha Delta switches. And also, if you live in a small area like an apartment or you have an HOA or something where you're kind of restricted, where you can't put up, you know, big monstrosities, there are some solutions. Um, in an apartment, uh, you're, you're very limited. If you have a balcony, you can put something out on the balcony. Of course, you'll have to run the cable through the door, so that's no fun. 
but there are some mobile glass mounts that, uh, that mount like the old cell phone antennas where they would go through your back window. And those do work. Uh, they're not great, uh, but they will work if you're in a restricted area like that. If you're in an HOA, you can have a uh, attic mounted antenna. If you've got some trees, you can disguise your antennas in the trees, you know, to try to uh, appease the HOA uh, people that walk around with clipboards, just stuff like that. You know, you, there are solutions. You can Google those solutions uh, so that you're not cut off from the whole thing just because of the restrictions that you might have there. All right, so here's the question that you've all been waiting for is why? Why do I want to get involved in this? Why do I want to spend money on something like this when I can just pick up a cell phone and call my buddies, you know, and they don't need a license. I don't need a license to call a cell phone. But, you know, it, that yeah, that's the easy way out. But for me, it's it's fun. It's just a lot more fun to talk on the radio than it is to talk on the phone. If you're driving down the road and you're mobile, for some reason, it's easier to hold up a microphone and talk to somebody than it is to hold up a cell phone. You know, they did a thing on Mythbusters with the cell phone, and they found that cell phones were just as dangerous as drunk driving, uh, talking on the cell phone, that is. So for some reason, the radio doesn't seem to affect you that way, or at least it doesn't for me. The other thing is, is you get to talk to lots of interesting people. You know, it kind of creates an adventure. You don't know who these people are or where they are. And it's just kind of cool to do that. Uh, sometimes these people are a lot smarter than you are about this kind of stuff. And if you have questions, you can ask, and they're always happy to help. At least they usually are. There are some trolls on there, but, you know, you got trolls everywhere. Uh, the other thing is, is there's a certain amount of satisfaction in using your own equipment. I don't like to talk on repeaters myself. I like to use Simplex, which is like the CB, where you're talking directly to the other station. You're not using a repeater that's in the middle. I've talked on a few repeaters when I first got involved and I found that they are, uh, they, they don't like you to talk about certain things, we'll just say. And I just got tired of that. So I just switched over to Simplex and I don't even fool with those people anymore. I'm using my own equipment. And as long as I'm obeying the FCC rules, nobody can tell me what I can talk about or can't talk about. Uh, so that's just my advice for a newbie. Yeah, you can use a repeater if you like the people and all that, but it's not the only solution. There's, there's a lot of other solutions. Also, <laughs> here's, here's one that uh, maybe you haven't thought about. If there's a natural disaster, and we'll just say if something hits the fan instead of the other word that uh, is usually on that phrase, uh, the ham radio is usually going to work. Uh, you know, you, they use that for the Civil Air Patrol. They use uh, radio they don't use phones for that kind of stuff during an, a disaster. So, yeah, unless there's an EMP, you know, then that's another story. That's going to take out the electronics, and then, of course, nothing is going to work. But um, in most natural disasters, this is going to work, and the, uh, the cell phone may or may not work. So, okay, I hope this video has kind of given you some tips, some advice, some hopes, hopefully some useful information. All right, so I appreciate you watching.